So Jasmine US originally talked about this a while ago, and it's not just him. It's other people that are part of her community and so on. Uh, trying to keep you guys informed, but I have to do something to kind of start out the outline. Let's face it, guys. Not a lot of people are aware of some of these crazy price um, expectations for Jasmine. When you hear $17, again, you might think that old Filipino ice cube here, some of you guys have labeled me. That's not what I labeled myself, but that's what you guys call me. Think that I'm absolutely bat crazy when it comes to this. Again, I'm not the one who mentioned 1787, right? Jasmine management and some of those KPI targets and so on. I think it's even referenced in one or more different white papers, right? It might have been a modification where the case be. Let's go ahead and full screen this and get into just that. So why is this significant? Well, were you aware that originally back on July 31st of 2022, uh, shout out to her brother Dip Metaverse cited some of this. So Jasmine US kind of reiterated back in August 5th of 2022 that the KPI goal of 1787 by 2026 with 107 million users, he feels as though that he thinks it's you know, easily possible. How is it possible? He says, Jasmine is focusing on Japan and Asia first. Notice that this is really, for the most part, like coming true. Have we not noticed that, especially when it comes to Hong Kong? Target nations, India, Thailand, Vietnam, Philippines, China, especially Hong Kong, right? Um, Indonesia, Bangladesh, Japan, roughly 3% of these nations equals 107 million lockers. As in what, guys? As in personal data lockers, right? So getting into this next part, of this outline and why it's important okay is recognizing this <clears throat> and that is jumping over to some of these key things okay so dip metaverse has the outline that's mentioned here and he goes into detail he says jasmine investors there's a lot of new guys uh new people here all right and i welcome you guys thank you for being here he says he had a chance to talk to jasmine community manager on discord who did confirm with the management team that jasmine's kpi are in fact targets for 2026, making the expected price about 1787. Not financial advice, but if they execute, um, hodlers should be greatly rewarded. Shoot, many of us have been hodling this, if you want to call it that. I know some of you guys don't like that term, uh, for quite a long time. Now, keep in mind, okay, you know, this is a blast from the past. What do we know when it comes to dip? Metaverse. He actually went to Japan. Remember a few months ago, he actually met Horasan, right? Very cool stuff. Brought us some more info. Man, that was really cool, right? So he knows a thing or two because he's seen a thing of, or two, right? Getting more into the outline, look what it mentions. Partnerships and all sorts of good stuff, right? So some people have pointed out some of these things, and I understand. I mean, maybe not everybody's going to agree with everything that's presented, and that's okay. This is, channel is not about having everybody being yes men or yes ma'am or whatever the case be. But dip. He mentions here um, some of these key things, right? So he mentions, and let me jump back for a second. I think I messed up that for a second. My bad. Um, yeah, he mentions specifically about this whole thing that I think is worth getting into, okay? So this part, my bad if it's not big enough. I'll just keep it right here. Share this tab instead. Copy image address. My bad blows up again okay um but he states basically speaking that focusing on asian markets yes focusing on asian markets jasmine plans to expand its business by partnering with leading local companies with the goal of 107 million active users by 2026. now keep in mind guys right the recent news that happened on i want to say tuesday was the Panasonic news, right? Do we have something to elaborate on this, right? Of course we do. But understanding this outline that originally started way back to kind of give you an idea of the expectations, is it real? And I would be asking that question too, okay? So let's pull this up. Let's take it to the next page. Sorry about that. Um, let's blow this up. I think that's probably big enough, right? Instead of me jumping back and forth. So Danny, and I remember Danny, right? He was originally asking about like the lockup and stuff like that. So he states back in July 26, 2022, he says, hey, I got an answer. You're right. They are 2026 goals. 
Um, and then Dip says, so the 500 is a 2026 goal. Again, this is back to the value. Not, please, if you're new to Jasmine, this is not anything to do with like $500 per Jasmine. It has to do with the actual value of uh, personalized data, I believe, annually. And on the low end, they mentioned that $500 is on the low end. On the high end, guys, what was it? I can't remember, but it was at least over 1000 Somebody could quote me, maybe Rob uh you know crypto future somebody like that i don't have the exact numbers but again even on the low end 500 is huge right so danny says yes the 500 is also 2026 goal checked with the management team right checked with the management team hmm well what else do we have right that's why i'd be asking well let's take you to the next part deacon shout out to him right he's showed up to our show many times he's been in um when I used to do Twitter spaces, great members of the community. Give them a follow. Talks about back on yesterday. He says KPIs, 107 million users is imminent 2026. Again, listen to another person in the community. It's not just because we're saying, oh man, this would be so cool. It's so cool to just get through these targets. If that's all we had, guys, let's be honest, that would be fluff, right? Tell you flat out, just wait a minute. We're going to get into all the juicy spots, but we want to have and respect people that are new to this. Okay. And there's a lot of new investors when it comes to Jasmine. So getting into this part, you will see this outline and Jose, you know, the Deacon uh, mentions that 50 to 50 cents to a dollar potential to cycle. I actually had it more. I think, uh, what was it? The other day we talked about $2. Remember that? I don't know if you guys saw that. Uh, but we did talk about $2 even being conserved, conservative, right? So Panasonic cited here, or, you know, uh, Toyota, Transcosmos, Wits, you know, Hitachi, um, Hitachi, excuse me, Sony, and so on. But Brian, who is an ambassador, pointed out to all of us, in Japan, we have already cooperated with large companies such as Transcosmos. Yeah, many of us have done deep dives on that. And he says Japan's largest customer service center. Toyota and Panasonic Wits, which also provide mobility solutions for autonomous driving smart cities, right? The whole concept of the goal of Society 5.0. Sony's only laptop brand, Vio, and multiple Japanese local governments. Um, you know, you, you see some of this stuff pointed out here, right? And it says, if you don't see it yet, eventually you will be shown. Now, can we show you? Yes, we can show you. But again... Look at the old research. So, Jankshin would be top left, Jasmine top middle, um, Toyota, Sony, Panasonic, right? IoT, uh, blockchain times data democracy, okay? And this citation from November 1st, 2022, where Brian goes on to mention, and I'm not going to go down the a super rabbit hole where it's an endless chain, but again, this is good. You have to respect the research. He says in this thread, he saw a lot of people asking about this response from Hara. And how Hara gave uh, this response in the particular AMA, at least back then. Um, talking about how uh, Kunitaki Ando started two of these three subsidiaries. And he's glad that, you know, he had some of these people ask this question. It says uh, from De Niro, will you cooperate with Sony? Sony Group is a holding company with this group. We do business with the PC section, the financial section, and the design section. Getting more into this, look at this for a second. <clears throat> Number two of four, again, it's not too long. The PC section more likely refers to Vio, as he's sure we all assume. Sony still owns the trademark rest of Vio and sells the non-corporate line on their website. Beyond that is speculative. Could it be PlayStation aiming to bridge cross PC and mobile? I will have a piece where I'm going to elaborate a little bit more on PlayStation in the future. Be out on the lookout for that. I'm not going to do it tonight. We're not going to make this a seven-hour show, but... Sony moving beyond PlayStation and PC with newly purchased mobile gaming arm. That was cited back in August of 20, August 29, 2022. Um, and it talks about, you know, this vision, um, talking about some of the big games and how Sony has purchased Savage Game Studios to work on mobile games and how Sony is taking the lead in regards to new mobile games division, et cetera, et cetera, right? But when you get more into this, it talks about the design um, how they spanned out to the most of Sony group, um, its reach. It says uncertain as to exactly what Jasmine is working with them on. And again, you will see some speculation that gets confirmed. 
But the point is the designs and the, the key st uh, strategic players. Everything you see here, for the most part, is a, uh, you know, a form of IoT. I did talk about Sony Bank Wallet the other night. You're welcome to watch that. You can watch it on the chopped up version later. Um, but there's other things to get into, right? And basically, like IoT, especially with the droids, get into the next particular page, talk about new standards. I'm always talking about standards, especially when it comes to ISO, right? The working groups, especially in Japan. But the fourth part is also crucial to understand. Back to what we talked about the other night, financial is Sony Financial Group. To me, I think this is where we, we get blindsided, okay? Hold on a second. Let me come back in the frame. So I mentioned the other day, I said, guys, Sony Bank Wallet, right? Uh, and we talk about the patents that exist currently speaking and how we could use this blueprint from, you know, Sony Bank and apply it towards the Jasmine Super Wallet, right? And, you know, I get some people may not be um, on par with what I say, and that's okay. You know, difference of opinion. I, it doesn't matter if I'm always right. Heck, I'm wrong about certain stuff sometimes, too. I'm a human being. But the point is, recognizing the research, is there something valid when it comes to some of these concepts? Now, in the past, we have pointed out in regards to Panasonic being speculative, and we did deep dives about that, and it stated, look, here's the underlying tech, here's the connections, here's us connecting the docs, and then, boom, Hara drops the bombshell saying, guess what? Panasonic is a real thing. That was the big strategic partnership, if you will, and they're going to use the select Jasmine for the personal data lockers. And when we get more into the outline, you'll understand why that's significant. But again, I want this to make sense for everyone, not just the, the OGs that have been following this for a long time. There's a lot of new people, right? So let's full screen this again. This is the last part on the Brian outline, but I want to pound it home. So he says, uh, Sony Financial Group. Again, guys, this is, in my opinion, the finance democracy plug for Jasmine. It's like, I don't know why people aren't talking about this more, and I'm, I'm glad that Brian did in the past. It says life insurance, banking, and well others, uh, well, excuse me, as well as other subsidiaries you can see from the site have um, been made possible by Kunitaki Ando. Jasmine also mentioned working with major financial groups a year ago. Again, a year ago, that was 2021. This was cited in 2022. There's a history lesson behind the whole thing. I've gotten to some of this whole history lesson for you guys. But nonetheless, Sony Financial Group structure, you have all of these listed here, plus the subsidiaries, Sony Life. I mean, the branches, right? Consolidated subsidiaries. Um, and there's a profile about how it all kind of comes together, right? But you know how many times I reference Tadashi Morita? Well, let me also reference them one more time to pound it home for all you newcomers. So let's go ahead and share this part. And also, I'm going to take off that thing on the screen. Also, the branding for you can not have it blocked on your view. So look at what's mentioned here. You ever wonder why I mentioned Tadashi Morita so many times? Look at this. This is good stuff. It says here, Sony was established immediately after the end of World War II. Were you aware of that? I mean, a lot of us don't know about some of this stuff, right? And just 12 years later, it made a bold name change with an eye on the world. When asked why the company name was changed, Mr. Morita, as in Tadashi Morita, again, guys, understand how huge of a player he is because he is just as important as Kazumasa Sato when it comes to patents. Okay, so Mr. Morita replied, quote, it's because we want to expand globally. Hmm. There were proposals for the name of the company, such as Sony Electronics Industry and some um, and Some Denki, if I'm pronouncing that right, but it was Mr. Morita himself who insisted, quote, we should definitely go with Sony Corporation, along with the image of a globally successfully uh, successful company, uh, Sony Spirit, which is not bound by in, any industry or business type resides in it. Understand this, guys. This is to, this is crazy, right? When you see some of this stuff. Um, getting more into this, excuse me. Let me scoot over here. Uh, I mentioned earlier that Mr. Morita dreamed of owning a bank, but he had managed to change the company name to Denki or Sony Electronics Industry. He would have been bound by the terms Denki and Denshi, and Sony Life as financial institution might not have been born. 
Who knows? Mr. Ondo, as in Kunitaki Ondo, says, quote, Sony's a free spirit and originality. It shows Sony's existence as a place of innovation, word that expresses the present and future possibilities, an expression of firm confidence that there is something only Sony can do. And it is no exaggeration to say that it is the ex in an extreme robust innovation strategy that intends to continue creating a value by not restricting itself. What would be a robust innovation and what would be a new value of not restricting itself? Think about it. Finance democracy, data democracy, right? It may be Sony and Sony Life that will be truly the embodiment of make.believe in the future. And of course, there's more about this. It says Mr. Kunitaki Ando, honorary chairman, Sony Life Insurance. And of course, it gives the history of them and so on. But again, the 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 big hot head honcho of what? Not just Sony, but of Jasmine. Now, getting over to this part and why we're pulling it all out to you guys tonight. And if anything, I'll pull the branding back up. Once you understand the beginning, the past, the present, all this good stuff. So let's just get into this next part because I know I have quite a few things to try to get back into. Okay. Um, so that was Brian's page four. Okay. So we're done on that. Now, let's take you over to some of what you've been waiting for. And I want to give a shout out to this guy. His name is Chad G. Now, this will help pound it home because with his research, I also expanded upon that. But I want to give credit where credit's due. Chad G, if you're watching, you rock. We do appreciate you in this community. Keep up the good work. And I'm so glad that you're willing to share some of this, like you mentioned. Let's go ahead and full screen this. Okay. Was it mentions? Don't look past the fact that Jasmine is intertwined with the auto industry. Panasonic provides batteries for Tesla. Understand the bigger picture. And I will give you a little hint. All right. I didn't want to drop too much of a bombshell uh, for the future. You know, my, my big outline will probably be Sunday, not this Sunday, but Sunday after. Um, there is something hinted here. Okay. When it comes to Tesla. And all that, right? You're going to want to watch that. If there was ever a show you want to tune into, I know this is a big show today. You want to tune into that one. So what does Mr. Chad G have here? Well, he states, at least this is from the research of, and it's not that long ago, guys, January 15th of 2024, it says Panasonic said it will produce a new and improved version of the 2170 cells used in Tesla Model 3. Are you guys hearing this? Or are we talking about Carolina pogo sticks? No. Hear this. Okay. 2170 cells used in Tesla Model 3 and Model Y at the plant in Nevada. Then it operates with Tesla sometime during 2024, 2025. Now, I do cite material from Bloomberg. I always try to show you guys those investor place um, bits of coverage, right? Um, typically on Saturday. Then maybe Sunday, latest Monday. I know this week it was too late. I apologize for that. But again, what's the point? The point is recognizing what it says. Not that long ago. Even before the bombshell of what Hara shared on Tuesday, you had this report of Panasonic to soon make new batteries for Tesla could reduce EV prices on that particular report. Now, where am I really going with this? Do you know where I'm going with this? I think you guys know where I'm going with this. So we have come to the conclusion that when we talk about specifically data, Jasmine stands at the forefront of trying to create a whole thing of changing the game when it comes to decentralized data marketplace and democratizing data. Google, especially when we use our phones, you know, some of you guys put this up to the, you know, on your dash or whatever the case be some of you guys work for uber or you know other ride shares and so on and we use google maps i remember MapQuest back in the day right but you know we use google maps and say what you want even though you feel as though that you are getting um that whole thing of you know oh it's just collect it's just trying to get me to my destination huh give me a break you are sharing a tremendous amount of data to google about your path to your destination what if your destination is 
Kentucky Fried Chicken or Pizza Hut or whatever the case be, right? That gets used and that gets that's considered, you know, very powerful data that has lots of value. Where I'm going with is this. Tesla is also part of the bigger picture when it comes to the collection of data with their own system. Okay. Think about it for a second. And if anything, come back to uh, that way of thinking and understanding where we're going to the next part with this. Okay. So let that resonate in your head. And just in case you're like, you know, a naysayer or think this is all speculative, give you a little more of a blast from the past to confirm some things. Back to Kunitak Yondo, again from Dip Metaverse. He states, one of the major clients of Japan Innovation Network is Panasonic, where Jasmine Management Chairman Kunitak Yondo is still a director. If you're brand new to Jasmine, you weren't aware of this. If you've been part of this whole thing for a while, you already know about this, and it's okay. The point is, if we're going to talk about mass adoption, we also need to do our due diligence and help those that are new to our community and this whole thing of Jasmine. Jasmine's deep connections shouldn't surprise you anymore, but if you're new to Jasmine, like I point out, then I say welcome and get used to it, right? And this was posted two days ago, right? There's Kunitaki Ando. This is the, you know, the Japan Innovation Network. And... Like you see, I'll pull it up on the other screen. It mentions specifically the clients. And look at this. Sony Corporation, Asahi Group Holdings, and of course Panasonic. Now that's circled there, right? Yeah, that's circled there. You know, and some people will say, well, yeah, of course it's circled there. Because that news just got dropped. Um, and... You know, that was confirmed by Hara two days ago. And I would agree with you. But were you aware that this was something that was actually originally posted years ago? Two plus years ago. And people were saying that this was a nothing burger. What happens, guys? And I'll come, in, I'll, I'll come out of the frame. What happens when we get a big circle for Sony? Now, some people say we already had that circle with Sony. Because you have Kunitaki Ando. You have... Kazumasa Sato, you have Tadashi Morita and some of the other guys. And I would agree with you on that. But some people want to hear officially, right, confirmation instead of realizing the concept of NDAs. Guys, this further solidifies the whole thing of NDAs and pounds home that much more why you, from a retail perspective, from a retail holder's perspective of holding Jasmine, why they don't just come out with, you know, um, hey, yeah, we we have Panasonic partnership. Maybe because they're waiting. Notice where we're at right now. The bull run, right? The start of the bull run. Waiting for a bull market. Wouldn't it make more sense to do this now compared to in crypto winter? Well, people can agree to disagree on that. But it's worth pulling out. So there's other ones that are mentioned here. NTT, Decomo, right? Uh, NTT Data. Um and you know some of these other ones but again what happens when sony corporation is highlighted okay that's my key thing for you guys so getting more into this let's give you some more that's juicy shout out to this guy i love this this is this is the community this is guys you are part of an awesome community you have people that are in our community that provide all of us alpha research right while we all appreciate research from all different sources and so on, understand, it, you know, like the other guy just showed us some, some some things, right? And then this particular guy. So I want to give a shout out to him. His name is Jeremy Prine. And he follows me. Look at this. This guy deserves like a thousand subscribers or followers, right? But the point is he posted this. He cited me. He cited Rob, right? Crypto Future 99. Little Bidman. Awesome researcher. And also the one and only Neo X Tricks. Why would he do that? Because he thinks it's a big deal. I'm glad that some of you guys in the community have been retweeting this. Posted this two days ago. He states, and I'll come out of the frame to put some more emphasis on this. He states, the below was published January 2024. Not sure if you're all aware. Hmm, what is this? Panasonic 
to soon make new batteries for Tesla could reduce EV prices. Now, this is back to uh, what the other gentleman just posted about, who is Chad G. Can we expand on this? You better believe we can expand on this. Let's take you to the article. Well, elect, uh, it's called electrek, right? Dot CO. You have this whole thing about Panasonic, all right? And what does it mention? Well, it goes on to mention that Panasonic to soon make new batteries for Tesla. Back to what, you know, Chad G was talking about. Could reduce EV prices. How long ago? January 15th, 2024. Let's get into some of this stuff. And I think this might be big enough. If it isn't, I can try to zoom in a little bit more. Um, let me see if I can without it ruining the outline. Um, okay, it doesn't ruin it too bad. All right, so yes, look at this. Panasonic said it would produce a new and improved version of the 2170 cells. And are we just talking about this? Used in Tesla Model 3 and Model Y at that plant in Nevada. We already mentioned that earlier. I apologize. But look what it also mentions in regards to the Nevada plant. It says it operates with Tesla sometime during 2024, 2025. According to a new report in Bloomberg, the new cells, which pack a lot more energy density, could help reduce EV prices, the company states. Panasonic CTO, who is Shoichiro Watanabe, I'm not pronouncing that right, told Bloomberg in an interview that the Japan-based electronics maker aims to deliver on its promise to, quote, quadruple production again quadruple production that's pretty bold capacity by the fiscal 2030 year interesting and to make that happen he said the company won't need to rely on building new factories or pouring large investments into production plans quote we will expand battery capacity and improve productivity at the same time Getting more into this, it says Panasonic, whose main U.S. customer is Tesla. If you weren't aware of that, there's some of the juicy right there. Now, you guys already know where I'm going with this. Stay tuned. It gets better. It says that they produce some 10% of the batteries found in electric vehicles around the world. The company plans to start producing a revised version of the 2170 type cil uh, cylindrical battery cells, which Tesla uses in its Model 3 and Model Y cars. Increases battery production, right, like we said, 10%. Panasonic has been working on them to increase these densities of the 2170 cells with Watanabe saying that the new improvements could help reduce the overall cost of an EV. Presumably, better energy density means fewer cells would be needed to produce a car, which would reduce the overall price. Now, getting into some of the good stuff here, i got to mention a little bit more because it seems like this is crazy stuff, but you have to understand the bigger picture. And this is North America. So my thing is this, when you heard, some people said, you know, why would Jasmine open up a North American office in Silicon Valley? Okay. Maybe because there's something more going on than we need to realize. And we'll get into that a little bit later as well. Maybe not tonight, but you know, like I said, on the other island, guys, I can't put it all in, in a 12 hour show. I'm just being honest, but Panasonic is currently building a new factory with 2170 type cells for EVs in DeSoto, Kansas. OK, it's second in North America. The plant is a four billion dollar project with initial output of 30. Uh, I think that's gigawatts, if I'm not mistaken, a year could be mistaken. Um, in 2022, it was expected that the factory would be designated for the new and larger 4680 type cylindrical battery cells, which are thicker and more vol uh, voluminous. I can't pronounce that tonight for Tesla's next generation models. But Panasonic delayed that project. Well, I know this is a lot to get into, guys. Just hear me out about this. I know it's a lot verbatim, but trust me, I don't want to skip any of this. You'll understand why in a bit. A third U.S. battery manufacturing plant should be announced soon. Company pledging to raise production cap uh, capacity of 200 gigawatts or whatever that is by 2030 from its current limit. While there's still no word on the location of this plant, likely to bring thousands of jobs. Panasonic did turn down nearly $700 million in state incentives to build in Oklahoma. Right, but we still got the whole thing of Kansas and even Nevada, do we not? We do. Early in December of last year, Panasonic announced an agreement to purchase nano composite silicon anode material from Sela, a California-based company co-founded in 2011 by Tesla's early employees. Sela's or Scylla, Titan silicon anode powder, as wired reports, consists of micrometer-sized particles of nanostructured silicon replace graphite and traditional lithium 
ion battery. Swapping it doesn't require any new manufacturing processes and uses EVs. It can enable 500 mile nonstop trips and 10 minute recharges. Guys, think about this for a second. That's going to be a lot of data that's going to be collected. Do you also know where we're going with this? All right, just a little bit more. This is all raw, rather promising stuff. I would agree. Now, this part, I will end it on, I mean, as, as far as, you know, this page, not, not, not the research. It goes on to mention, all right, let's not make this political, but it says the Biden administration's Inflation Reduction Act, which offers subsidies to battery cell manufacturing in the U.S., has been a massive boon to companies like Panasonic, to build in and manufacture in North America. Bloomberg cites that Panasonic, and look at this part, guys, forecasts a $587 million increase in operation during the fiscal year that ends in March of 2024. What the heck? We are in March of 2024, are we not? So where is old Max really, really going with this? Am I going to end it there? Well, of course I'm not going to end it there. I'm going to take you to the next part about this, what elaborates a little bit more, and this is actually from a local publication in freaking Kansas. Stay tuned for this. You're going to love this particular part. Um, I know that we can get back in the comments. There's roughly about 65. Hey, wouldn't it be the first time I was late on comments? Please understand this is the good part you wanted, you've been waiting for, okay? Let's get into this particular part. Let's take you over to this, Okay. And here it is from the Kansas Reflector. All right, don't ask me how I got this information, but it is what it is. So from this publication, it goes on to elaborate a little bit more on, um, you know, Panasonic. So it says Panasonic, if you weren't aware, answers concern about Kansans to pay for electricity infrastructure serving the DeSoto plant. The company tells legislators the EV battery facility to be in operation in early 2025. Here's kind of, I don't know what the heck that is. It's kind of weird, but you know, it looks like, was that the Burj um, in Dubai? And then, oh, I see. They're trying to show how big it would be. Okay. That makes sense. You have, for instance, the, uh, you know, the Empire State Building and, you know, um, the Burj, right? All right. So, you know, Panasonic executives briefed a Kansas House committee on construction of the four billion electric vehicle battery plant in DeSoto. Guys, four billion dollars for this particular electric vehicle battery plant offered a graphic depiction of the massive size of the facility. So, you know, that is I guess that is pretty darn big. The white area defines the shape of the main building compared to cruise ships. Yada yada. You get the picture, right? Um, it goes on to mention that the facility would begin production in early 2025 and negotiations continue with, uh, Evergy. Let me blow this up a little bit more. I, I don't think this is big enough for you guys, especially if you're boomer after sooner watching with his dog, Monica on the couch. All right. I know some of you guys like Dave Chappelle, like blank, yo couch, buy another one. Right. Bad reference. All right. So here's the thing. Um, where's this part? Where's this part? Let's go back. Yeah. I gotta get back into this. So. Yes, 2025 negotiations continue with Evergy on delivery of electricity to manufacturing space occupying 4.7 million square feet. Company broke ground in July 2022, a project backed up by $1 billion in state economic incentives with the promise of employing 4,000 people in production of lithium batteries, so on and so forth, right? Um, but the batteries will be used in vehicles. There was a testimony to this particular house, right? That's in, um, you know, you got to keep in mind, you know, this is the state legislature, right, of Kansas. But Panasonic said in December that decision not to build a comparable plant in Oklahoma didn't indicate presence of supply chain or market force challenges capable of undermining the Kansas plant. Now look at this statement. We are extremely committed to our growth and development in Kansas, said Tina Jeffries, a Panasonic group manager of sustainable sustainability and energy we do not anticipate any issues when it comes to ultimate market demand for a product this is generational um, investment in kansas as you can see from a you know how quickly we're putting steel in the ground blah 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 but they're at full speed for the project as far as panasonic the battery supplier to electric vehicle tesla said installation of the steel framing in desoto um, on one side of the two wing plant was 93%. I'm not gonna get into that part, excuse me on that. But 
where was this next part? Sorry. Um, yes, listen to this. It says that when we get down to it, we know that bringing our load onto the grid does come with some concerns from various stakeholders. Now, my point is this. Remember what I talked about Tadashi Morita and DC microgrid? Okay. Again, understanding the bigger picture. You can watch more of the deep dives on that. But listen to this. We are committed to paying for any energy infrastructure that is dedicated and serving our site. We have reiterated that commitment time and time again that we'll pay for infrastructure that is directly serving our facility. Infrastructure. All right. Pause for a second. Now, I don't have the citation, but you can go back to yesterday's show. What did Panasonic say, guys, on Tuesday with that particular tweet from Hara? Said that with Shazmi, they have chosen them for all of the infrastructure. Yeah, you can go looking for it yourself. All of the infrastructure. Tadashi Marita, DC Microgrid Technology, a lot of information mentioned here about energy, right? Just saying, just saying, let's get into a little bit more. So getting more into this, we have reiterated the commitment time and time again that we will pay for infrastructure that is directly serving our facility. She said that the pledge was limited to infrastructure on its manufacturing site. Panasonic also adjusted downward its projections for energy consumption and remained focused on making efficient use of power grid. Right. How about DC power grids, microgrids? whatever you want to call it, right? I'm telling you flat out, this is why I pointed out to you guys numerous times, do not sleep on Tadashi Morita. He is the unsung hero of the Jasmine management team because, my God, I mean, you know, he created all these freaking patents. All right, look at this for a second. Questions of fairness. Carmichael um, said that the cost of electric rate discounts awarded substantial excuse me, substantive economic development projects such as Panasonic would be borne by uh, Evergy's central region customers. Quote, what steps do I need to make legislative to prevent my constituents from paying for um, infrastructure and rate increases that benefit Johnson County? And then this person from Panasonic replies with, thank you for the question, Jeffries. While we will not necessarily tell you how to do your job, what we can do is address this from the company's perspective. We have not yet opted into a rate and we are committed to paying for a direct serve infrastructure. We recognize that there's a broader infrastructure being built both for us as... Did you not catch that? We recognize there's a broader infrastructure. Jeez, I wonder what that could be. Being built for both for us. Who is us? Panasonic. What was just dropped two days ago jasmine for us as well as other economic development and capacity needs in the region she said emergence of large power customers such as panasonic would lead to downward pressure on rate increases over time carmichael asked whether the decision by panasonic to back away from oklahoma raised the potential of economic shifts leaving kansas with large manufacturing building utility blah blah, blah right this part, should I be concerned within the next two to five years that the same types of economic and supply chain problems will result in the closing the plant in Johnson County, leaving us with the albatross, right? What we're going to be doing with the stranded assets. Jeffrey said Panasonic was committed to the success of Kansas battery plant and the emergence of more renewable energy sources such as solar, wind, in the state. We have covered this numerous times. Again, back to the whole thing of Tadashi Morita. If you want to see those videos, they're all there. They are not time sensitive. This is why I never put so much emphasis on just time sensitive first to cover it news. She said that the company would welcome the opportunity to purchase off the grid the solar power generated by a complex place near the Panasonic plant. Panasonic makes electric vehicle batteries, but our commitment to making positive stewards of the community. We are very committed to the environmental stewardship that is the, you know, what it says, uh, the core of their business strategy. They're going to be here for Kansas, right? Priority, the penetration of all this stuff. She said that Panasonic continued to negotiate with Evergy on the electricity rate for the plant and, you know, coming up with strategic um, 
examples of all this, right? Let me go further down on this because I know this is a lot about Kansas and maybe you guys don't want to hear all about all this. But this part says in regards to December, Panasonic announced it would no longer um, be building an electric vehicle battery plant in Oklahoma. I already mentioned that earlier. But the company has selected Aprilla, potential site in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and for a third plant in the United States. Panasonic operates a facility in Nevada. And there you go. I know I did a lot of talking, but there you go. Why do we talk about all this stuff? Because it's Tesla in that Nevada connection. In June, said it would expand EV battery production by 10% by March of 2026. Remember how many times we mentioned that, guys, it's not about direct partnerships. It's the underlying tech, right? Where subsidiaries, one connects to the other. The other ends up using the particular tech. You know how huge this is going to be for Jasmine? And I'm not ending it there. But I think it's going to be absolutely monumental to say the least. Because, you know, I'll share this again. I didn't mean to unshare it. I don't know why I did that. Sometimes I get too wrapped up in myself with the news and the research that I do that. Let's jump back to this. Guys, Panasonic operates a facility in Nevada. And again, we talked about the whole thing with Tesla. June said it would expand EV battery production by 10% by March of 2026. 2026. So news dropped about March of 2024. And we are always talking about this whole thing of KPI targets of 2026. Now, this is just one example. What happens when we start snowballing with more and more of these things? I think Panasonic is the beginning of a bigger picture for the, the you know, of some things to come. All that talk during the crypto winter of, you know, Jasmine being a scam and all this nonsense, malarkey, all those guys, those cockroaches, let's be honest, of, of the fudders. That, you know, you know who they are with the puppy dogs and so on that went back to their their holes, right? Now it's the, it's just crickets from them. They don't want to, they they don't want they don't want to be around for this, right? Right. So many people got flooded out of Jasmine. Is this not just a pause of callus? To me, this is game changer. This says to me that the KPI targets of twenty twenty six. Wow, wow. This can actually happen because you can see things that are being solidified, right? Going from speculation to confirmation. And that is absolute game changer when you look more into it. Okay. So I'm going to stop the share on that. I'm going to give you guys a little bit more of my own key takeaway about all this. You guys know me. I do this, right? So this article, the many articles, especially the one in regards to that publication and local paper for Kansas. Why point out all these things? Well, it should give you an idea of things to come for the possibility of a $17 KPI target. Understand this, looking more into Jasmine yourself, it is one of the best ones when it comes to the amount of holders on that ratio, right? Yeah, you know, we're going to be talking about SwiftCoin tomorrow. Shout out to Rue Black, who's going to be our special guest back here again. And I believe with uh, the stats of SwiftCoin, like 90%. Notice a common thing here, right? People understand the technology and what it could be tied into. This thing about Panasonic, even though Panasonic is a huge name, understand this is just the start of things to come, at least in my opinion. Okay, so I want to get into these last key things in conclusion and basically get into the reasons why I think it's bullish for all of us. So let's talk about this for a second. We talk about, for instance, Jasmine, but you have to keep in mind Panasonic. So four things I want to get into just real quick in regards to Panasonic. This whole thing about the increased battery production. As we know, Panasonic, like it mentioned before, not the last particular article, but maybe a few back, aims to quadruple, right? It's a battery production, ca uh, ca excuse me, capacity by 2030. 
okay, what happens by even doubling it by 2026? I mean, maybe it happens by 2026. Maybe it happens sooner than that, right? But the whole thing of this capacity by 2030 of building new factories suggests focusing on efficiency improvements and potentially expanding existing facilities. That was mentioned. What about the whole thing of improving 2170 cells? Hear me out. Panasonic plans to release those particular 2170 cells with higher energy density for, of course, the Tesla Model 3 and Model Y. By having that connection, understand that, wow, you know, you already have your plug and connect when it comes to the issue when it comes to like data and IoT products and so on, right? So that's a huge plug and connect for Jasmine, obviously. Because when we talk about the goals of like what was mentioned earlier, 103 million personal data lockers and so on, come on, man. Tesla, Elon Musk and all that, that's a huge thing. This could reduce the production costs and potentially bring down just that, EV prices. And that would trigger another example of supply and demand kicking in. Don't overthink it. What about this new U.S. factory? We talked about Oklahoma. We talked about Nevada, Kansas. Panasonic, as we know, is truly building that new factory. We cited that. If you want for your own reference, you can go to kansasreflector.com. I forgot to give you guys the citation. Um, and look more into it for yourself. But that new factory in Kansas for specifically 21 770 cells with plans for a third U.S. factory announcement soon. And we'll pay attention to it. You think I'm the only one that's going to be mentioning this? No. I'm sure members in our community are going to talk about Brian, Dip Metaverse, Icy Amphibian, you know, uh, Jesse, Rob, whoever, right? Neo X Tricks. There's going to be a lot of us talking about this. And we're going to follow it very, very closely. But that announcement, how soon will it be? You guys got to keep in mind, this indicates a strong commitment to the North American EV market. Say what you want. Some people were speculative about Kunitaki Ando's intentions of having a Silicon based Valley, um, Silicon Valley based office and why that was planted here so many years ago. I think if anything, we have our answer to that. It's a strategy for the future. That's awesome. They had this thing planned out many, many years ago. All right, listen to this for a second. Remember how I talked about that partnership with Scylla, Scylla, where it was called? Panasonic's collaboration with Scylla for silicon and node material holds promise for longer range electronic, um, or EVs, I should say, with faster charging times. Now, those are all benefits for, you know, Panasonic. We have to talk about Tesla for just a brief moment. And I'm not going to get into all the things about that. But there's two key things I want to bring you guys tonight. So Tesla, benefiting from Panasonic's battery advancements. Tesla in itself will likely be the first to use Panasonic's approved 2170 cells, potentially reducing production costs and boosting EV competitiveness. Say what you want. Having Jasmine strategically aligned with all these look, um, Internet of Things devices. Oh, my God. I mean, I, I, I can't think of anything more I want to get more excited about. I mean, and don't get me wrong. I'm a huge on Quant XRP and all this other stuff. But, man, oh, man. When it comes to Jasmine, this is why I won't shut up about it. Maybe you guys get tired of me talking about Jasmine. I don't know. But what about the whole thing of just that? Don't you think it would boost EV competitiveness? You better believe it will. That's a big win, not only for Panasonic, but of course for Tesla and especially for Jasmine. What about potential for longer range vehicles? Hear me out on this. The new silicon anode, that's what's called material from Scylla, like we referenced in the research, could contribute to Tesla developing EVs, listen to this, with a 500 mile range and 10 minute charging. 500 mile range, when we talk about utility in motion, that's a long range. And to constantly gather what? Data that could be combined with everything of what IoT is and so on. You don't think that's uh, one of the best use cases and best examples for a personal data locker and how that's used and who's gathering that data and so on. Again, if I'm going to Kentucky Fried Chicken or Roscoe's Chicken and Oil Change, right? 
and I want a side of 40 weight with uh, this, you know, my fried chicken, that's my business, is it not? Absolutely. But the whole thing is going four or 500 miles and having this strategic partnership with with the uh, with Panasonic and Panasonic with Tesla, do you not understand how huge that is? And where do we go from here? Again, like I've pointed out before, I honestly believe a Sony PlayStation 6 is going to be using Jasmine's tech. Why is that? Because wouldn't it make sense in the future with the metaverse, especially? Why would you want everybody to come to your platform of Sony PlayStation 6 and say it in the same breath, okay, thanks for coming over here on this brand new Sony PlayStation 6 and check out all our amazing products that we have for the Sony PlayStation 6 with our marketplace or, um, you know, uh, this subscription or wherever the case be, and then have a person leave that platform, the Sony PlayStation 6, and jump over to the, the meta uh, by Facebook a centralized entity for one this is sony that means japan i think if anything sony playstation 6 is going to have jasmine all over it like augustine karsten's fat kid on cake right but to each his own so this last part we talked about tesla we talked about panasonic for the highlight it's got to be jasmine right best for last jasmine the partnership with panasonic Jasmine's personal data lockers, right? That's why you're here. That's why you want to listen to it. Being used by Panasonic does, in fact, suggest potential for data monetization, like I mentioned, and secure data management in Panasonic's future endeavors. And the, the, one of the best examples of the endeavor with Tesla? Like, what? Yeah, yeah, okay, right? I mean, I'm going to say that. Ambitious KPI target of 17 bucks. Hear me out. This is why you're also here. Jasmine's target of $17 share price, or $17.87 like some of you guys mentioned, by 2026 indicates high expectations for, of course, as technology's value. But that example of Tesla, I think, takes the cake of everything that you have seen and mentioned for tonight. And with that said, that concludes the Jasmine segment of the night. Some of you guys ask what cold storage solution I use. I use this, and it is the Decent Wallet, all right? I also, of course, have a ledger uh, like this, all right? You can get a discount, basically, from going into the affiliate link, which is in all the live video descriptions and recorded and so on. And for the Yahoos that are out there, they're like, this is just a shield. And, you know, we'll fix pointing this out. And it's a great point. Were you aware that you don't necessarily get a discount link just going straight to the site? No, you actually have to go through a platform like this. So how cool is that? You know, I don't think anybody's complaining about that. But anyway, use the link, get a discount. There's another one here. If you're the type of person you want to get one for your, you and your, you know, significant other, uh, you can get two of them. They, have a, they actually have another promotion, which is this. And I think this is cool. You can get an all-in-one card wallet plus backup card package. Interesting. I thought that was cool. And again, one of the main key things I like about the Decent Wallet is not having to do the, the red tape of, you know, jumping through all the hoops for XDC and the custom folder. I mean, Edward Vincent can vouch on that. Some of you guys can too as well in regards to Ledger. That was a pain in the butt. You don't have that problem. You literally open up your phone it's on your app track everything that's going on right and you know same goes not your keys not your crypto you know the drill check it all out though if you wish to do so it is truly the cold storage solution that i use for the most part there's still some on ledger that you know i kind of split it up on and so on so it is what it is but if i have preference over one i'm going with this one a lot easier to use and so on and some people even to this day still ask me which one to use. Thank <laughs> you.